Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out Ram's first EV. It is a 2024 Ram 3500 Promaster EV. This one has the last mile delivery upfit kit. So there's a lot of additional features this vehicle has to show off. So let's check it out. Here's the window sticker. There's the optional equipment. You can see it's a $9,000 ad. So there's a lot of features here. Now, I'll have this window sticker at the end of the video and list it out in the description of the video as well. At first glance, you may not realize it's an EV. Uh, it looks like a Promaster, uh, except for it has the EV here on the side. Now it also has this door, which we'll get to in a second, this sliding door, and there's also a roll-up door in the back. Uh, looking at the front, it has the typical Promaster front end where it has the bumper that extends out in front of the vehicle. So for like uh, small minor impacts or something like that, it could be you know pretty robust material up here. Uh, there's also fog lights and an LED system. Now the LED system on this vehicle is intended to use very, very little uh, electricity. So it doesn't drain the battery very much to use the headlights. And we'll see how they, well, they work in a night video. Now it has the parking sensors across the front. It also has a camera here right underneath the RAM badge, this little camera right there. There's also a camera up here in the top center of the glass uh, for the lane keep assist system. So it has lane keep assist system, has a 360 camera system, has blind spot detection system, and a really, the, the cameras, the parking sensors, all that stuff help out. The blind spot detection system, a little indicator is here on the side mirror, so that'll, that'll illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. There's a camera here on the underside of the side mirror. There's also cameras here at the top. Uh, so you're able to have a backup camera, but there's also a rear view camera. And I'll show you that when we get on the inside. You see the clearance lights there at the top. And it has the roll up door here in the back. Very, very handy. It even has a step here in the back to get in the vehicle, parking sensors. And there's also a step here on the side. Now you notice the step kind of sticks out, uh, but it's not as much as the side mirror. So you got a gauge there. On, uh, as you're driving. The charge port is right here next to the front door and it's able to uh, charge with a level one, level two, or level three. So you can to go to a DC fast charger, you can charge it at home or at a shop. And you can also charge it basically on any 110 outlet as well. Uh, it's very slow to do that, but, but you can do that. There's another thing is you can adjust the charge rate as well. So you can go from 8, 12, 16, 24, all the way up to 40 amps. This is what the key looks like, and it's a fairly typical uh, RAM key. It has a physical key on the inside as well. And this one has the lock the cab, the back, lock the front, or unlock the front, lock, unlock the back, and then lock the vehicle right here, complete. And the way you uh, use each door, we'll start with this door, because this is the main uh, driver door. There's a physical key location here, and there's a button here. This is for locking the vehicle. Push that button, completely locks the vehicle, you can walk away. Uh, to unlock it, press it again. Allows you access to the vehicle. So it's a nice, comfortable handle. You can use it with the gloves and everything. There's the inside of the driver door. All hard plastic here. There's a little storage pocket here. This is a kind of rubberized soft armrest there. Uh, power window control, side mirror adjustments as well. There's a pocket. You can put some bottle, whatever you need to right there. And it's kind of raised up because the seat is quite high. And you can see there's a step to get in. You kind of step up. And we have all durable, uh, easy to clean surfaces throughout the entire vehicle. Now there is a heated seat control right down here. You notice it's kind of in this low position, but you can reach down and feel for it. The adjustments on the seats are manual. Um, basically, you tilt, move the seat forward and back here. You can tilt the back here, and it's very, very stable seat. Very comfortable, actually, too. We have a footrest here. There's also there's the accelerator brake pedal. To the left of the steering column here is the electronic parking brake, a little storage cubby. You can turn on the fog lights here, dimmer switch for the interior gauges. Uh, the actual headlight controls are here. These are, of course, uh, breakaway mirrors, so you can fold them in. Uh, you can also fold them out like so. Okay, so uh, and they are heated as well. And then you can see that has a blind spot mirror and a regular mirror there. So the way this door works, sliding door, remember the other side we had a button to lock and unlock? Same thing here. So this handle 
is completely locked. And you notice how solid the door is, not rattling or anything. Press that button to release it. Open it up and it catches on that side. Once the door latches on this side, it's very solid, you know, so it's it, it locks in place, both places really solid. And then there's these handles here for entering the vehicle here and here. So that's another solid uh, safety thing. You know, you want to be able to grab and hold on while you're getting in the vehicle. So there's the step here and then here. And right here is a little jump seat. This kind of flips down when you want to sit in it, but default is just kind of lifted up. And it goes up quite high. There's a seat belt as well. This one has the first aid kit mounted there. There's the aluminum partitions there. And this floor is a non-slip, uh, very, very, very non-slip surface here, very durable. And the headliner, this is really tall. Like I'm six feet tall and I have plenty of headroom here. So, and even if you did bump your head, it's, it's soft enough to where it's not gonna hurt. It's really cool being able to get out of a driver's seat and stand up and walk around. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting experience if you're not used to driving these type of vehicles. Okay, so this door, we can close it from the inside like so. And now it's closed. And then we have this little window that we can open up here if we want to manually slide it open and then it locks in place there. So yeah, this main front cabin area is really nice. Lots of headroom here, soft touch, easy to clean materials. There's a little fire extinguisher there. It's a little bit of space behind the back seat or behind this seat. Now behind the seat, uh, you will, if you pull the seat all the way back, like then this door right here, uh, will, won't be able to open up. So you have to make sure you have a little bit of clearance there. Because if I close this door and then move the seat back more, then it'll jam up this door. There's a little pocket right there to put stuff. This, this locks in place, but it still, you know, can move around while you're driving. Uh, here it's more solid. So you will hear a little bit of rattling and stuff while you're driving, uh, especially that roll-up door in the back. So as we go back here, there's a little bit of a step here, but the lights are motion lights. So we have lights up here. So as I move back, this first one turns on. You see that one turns on and then we move down this way this light will turn on so that's really cool and it just illuminates this whole area especially you know there, during the day and you have a little bit of light coming in that way but even at nighttime it's excellent there's also lights here as well to shine uh, outside and more of the this opening here And these shelves are flipped up now. You can see these are fixed shelves here. And they have 150 pound capacity, each one of those. And then we can flip down these shelves one by one. Flip it down, 150 pounds each. Uh, this one is a 200 pounder, much bigger though. Same thing with this one, 200 pounds. And we've got these here. 200 pounds, 200 pounds. So when you close them, uh, you still have plenty of room to walk down this aisle here. Let's see what it looks like from this vantage. So yeah, real easy to find stuff if you have things organized on these shelves. Um, you, and, and also, let's say you have a large box. Well, you can flip this up put it there, you still have the top shelf accessed. Um, you have to say have an even larger box. Flip that up, you still have the other side uh, to have shelves. So you can have a combination, you know, of shelves or no shel shelves or whatever. And I really like these motion lights. <laughs> Being able to just move around, automatically turn on, and then they turn off for you, uh, shortly after because it's save, save electricity and stuff. So let's go ahead and flip these back up. Once again, these are fixed shelves. These are the only fixed shelves here, these two. All these other ones can flip up. Uh, 
Uh, but there is a roadside assistance kit here. Uh, there's also a little hand truck it comes with. Um, so this is kind of neat. It's a little folding hand truck. It's not the most super heavy duty one, but they're definitely handy because they stay out of the way. You know, it's small. You can tuck it away. It's easy to fold up and all that stuff and get it out of the way. And there's a spot to put it. Now you can exit from the inside with this roll up door. Very easy. Uh, you see that little black bar right there? Put your foot on it, push it down and then lift up on the strap. So this little foot thing just basically releases um, releases the system, the catch there, and you can lift it up. Uh, there's also an emergency catch right here as well, a little a yellow one that you can pull up. Uh, so now we can just kind of step out and there's the opening here. I have all the dimensions and everything uh, in the description and at the end of the video as well. So yeah, this roll-up door is nice. Closing it from the outside, you just grab it, pull it down, very lightweight, very easy to roll. Latches in place like that. You see this little bar? You just re pull it out to lift it up. It's real easy to just flip it up there really high. Entering with the shelves down, it has these little orange bumpers. So if you happen to bump into it, it's very soft orange corners here. So it just kind of does away with the metal and it just has this rubber part here. Uh, so as you get in and out, if you happen to bump the corner, it's not a big deal as a sharp metal corner, you know? So we can enter in, walk in, no problem, lots of room. Closing it from the inside, it has that little lever right there so you can use your foot, close it up, now it's secure. You see these lights are on, uh, they'll go off in a second. Uh, and we'll see what they look like at nighttime. Now these motion lights do have some adjustments. Um, see right there where you can have them turn on with the door. You can turn them on or you can turn them off. So it has some adjustments there on them. Exiting this door is very easy. Just grab that and push it. Now you can go right on out. Grab that. Push it. Lock it. This seat is firm, but very comfortable. I really like this seat. It really is a pleasure driving this vehicle. Uh, that's really well thought out. So let's go ahead and start it up. So I have the key in my pocket, and I'm gonna press and hold the brake. Then I'm gonna press this button, and you'll see what happens. It pops up this notification about the forward collision warning starting system. And then it says, press the brake pedal, and then push it again. So the vehicle's on, but we still need to press the button. Now it says vehicle's ready to drive, and then we have a little ready indicator there. So it's like you have to press it twice. Um, so at first I was like, maybe I'm not doing it right, but that's just the way it is. Every time I've driven a vehicle, that's what you do. You press the button once, wait a second, press it again, now it's fully activated. So the steering wheel, uh, typical RAM buttons here. It has the buttons on the back of the steering wheel, which is great. So back here is the volume for the radio, up and down. So volume up, volume, volume down. The center button is to change through the audio sources. And then here on the left side, there's the same thing. It lines up with your hands as you're, as you're driving. And the up and down is to change to the tracks or the radio stations, whatever. And then the center button here on the left side is to change to the uh, the presets only so that's what that does really comfortable leather wrap steering wheel and it's soft gives in the hand it's not overly hard or doesn't feel like hard plasticky or anything like that it doesn't feel cheap it's a heated steering wheel as well uh, so yeah very very comfortable steering wheel and that little grip right there is great and also very easy to turn the steering wheel electric power steering you know just really nice and smooth you can zip around in a parking lot no problem Windshield wipers are up here. It does have an automatic function, so automatic rain sensing. Put in that automatic right there, and it works really well. Sometimes it goes a little fast when it doesn't have to, but usually it dies back down and goes normal. But being able to, especially when it's misting or something, have it on that automatic. You don't have to mess with it. it just kind of turns on when it needs to. Really handy. Turn signals here, of course, but it also has the headlight switch. We saw the, the fog light down here, but here's the headlight switch. So it does have off, on, or automatic. It also has automatic high beams as well. Here on the right side is a cruise control. Now it has the ability to have regular cruise control or the adaptive cruise control with the lane keep assist system. 
uh, you can choose whatever you want to start off with. So press that one if I want adaptive cruise control, which is much more convenient. Uh, press that button and then you can set it with either one of those buttons. You resume here and cancel here. It also has a speed limiter as well. Now on this one, you can go into 70 mile an hour is the maximum speed, the way it's set up. Here on the left side, um, arrows, okay, corresponds with the screen. We'll just look at that in a second. Voice recognition is here, so you can press that and call, you know, tell the system to call a person or whatever, um, or go to a specific address on the, the system. But the, the Bluetooth controls for the answering the call and hanging up, I like the way it's separate. So if you're calling, if you're driving and somebody calls, then you press that button to answer. And when you're finished, there is a definitive separate hang up button. Um, some vehicles have a single button to answer and hang up. So in hanging up with somebody, you might be answering another call and all that stuff because you know there's no definitive button for hanging up. So I like the fact that it has that. Here's the gauge cluster and it has a battery percentage right here. So it gives you a very large visual on the percentage of the battery here. So right now we're actually at 88%. So this can actually come around a little bit more uh, to go to 100%. It has an estimated range of 155 miles, and I find it's actually pretty accurate. Um, it, it, with my the way I drive the vehicle, and I've been doing a lot of you know around town and stuff like that to try to simulate a a local delivery driver, and uh, the actual number is seems to be going down based on the amount of miles I've been driving. So it has a digital speedometer here. It even has like a little simulated um, speedometer as well. This is the status of your cruise control system, adaptive cruise control. You even have a uh, kilometers per hour down here, which you can change that if you want to have it in the center if you need that, if you're in Canada or something. And here on the right side, it shows how much power you're using. So as you're driving, it goes up and it shows how much power you're using. And then when you're coasting or braking, then it'll show how much the regen braking system uh, is recharging the battery. So it kind of has this visuals here as well. Uh, so using these buttons, uh, let's scroll through. I'm going to scroll to the right. So you can see this is part of a menu system. We were in the home button, uh, the home menu basically. Next one is your trip. And you have trip A, trip B. You can reset them independently. And they show uh, a time, average speed, all that kind of stuff. Scrolling to the right again, this will be your driver assist, like your lane keep assist system, your adaptive cruise control, that kind of stuff. Just kind of give you a visual on that as you're driving. The next one is the vehicle information. And you see this one has a lot of pressure on the tires, 80 pounds in the tires right now. So going to the right, this will be your, whatever the radio is doing. Next one will be your navigation map. In addition to the map over here, you can have the map here. Uh, so this is really handy if you're doing a lot of deliveries and you're maybe in an area you're not familiar with or you just wanna you know, be very productive. Uh, you can keep an eye on the navigation map. Um, to get where you're going quickly. It tells you where you're going. And, and it's, you know, it's right there where you can see, instead of glancing over here, you can see it right there. It looks good too. Nice, the clarity is nice on the screen. It looks good. Next one is any stored messages. Next one would be the, uh, the settings. So there's display settings, security settings, safety and assist. So let's go into display settings. You can just see what's here. Security. So in the display settings, you can change what you want. And in, in, so let's go here. Screen setup. Center, bottom right, and then the restore default. So this bottom right over here is showing uh, the, the the time. You can let's say you want to change that. You can put the time, the odometer, outside temperature, date, compass, and ignition status. Which, whether you're running or whatever, that kind of thing. Because there's no there's no engine to run, so you, it kind of helps out. Um, but the time is good. You know, the time is good. You might want to have the outside temperature. That's another, uh, that could help out as well. All right. And then the next one here, uh, there's settings. Next one is back to the home uh, screen here, which is pretty much my default unless I have the navigation going. So on the dashboard here, you notice there's a handle uh, to help getting in the vehicle. Uh, the dashboard has these little pockets. Um, not super, me personally, I don't know how I would, maybe with some gloves or something like that but i um, not sure what they're necessarily used for. Uh, and there's also these status lights for when you're charging the vehicle. So they'll illuminate and, and there's uh, five of them. So it'll illuminate in succession as it gets a higher charge. There's a little compartment here uh, for putting documents and stuff. 
So, let's see if you can look in there. Smooth plastics, whatever you put in there is gonna slide back and forth, but it's good for documents, stuff like that. And this snaps down. Then you have this little storage compartment here, a little shelf, easy to put some stuff, and that's also easy to remember where it is, because you can see it. And then there is a glove compartment here as well. Pretty small size, I guess. There's cup holders here on the bottom. There's three of them. And you see it holds coffee, holds bottles of water, all that stuff, no problem. There's also a wireless charger here. If this my phone, won't find, even with the case on, and it's able to charge it. So this thing works great. A lot of these wireless chargers uh, can't handle the case that I have. But uh, this one works awesome. It works perfect. There's the shifter. So you put your foot on the brake and you can put it in reverse. Two things will happen when you put it in reverse. Parking sensors will be activated. And you also have the 360 camera system here. So you can see all the way around the vehicle. Uh, you can see there in the rear view since we're going backwards. Uh, but if you're going forward, you can pull that camera system up as well, going to the shortcuts here. And you can see the front view, and you can see the top or surround view here. And then you can actually make choices. So if you want to have the back view, the wide view in the back, the wide view here in the front, the more narrow, linear front view, and then the surround view, and then the broad back view. So this would be handy for like you're backing up to a dock or something like that. Um, you can have that specific view. So yeah, this is, uh, and it tells you what it is, front view, top view. So this is a really good, good handy, handy system to drive a vehicle like this. So I've, I've spent years driving a, a delivery truck, I'm talking years, without any kind of camera system or anything, not even a rear view mirror. It just had the side mirrors and the windshield. That was it. And I, so I had, you know, to back up things and change lanes and all that stuff without all this extra niceties. Now, this is really handy to have. I wish I have it, had it back then. So what the Uconnect system is, you have the home button here, which is split between navigation map right, and the audio. But you can change it. You can edit these pages if you want. The next one would be your media. So whatever's playing here it has FM. Uh, satellite radio. You notice there's no AM though. Uh, some EVs have um, interference with AM so they just leave that out and a lot of people don't use it anyway. Uh, so you can browse and you can change the audio settings and all that stuff here. It does have the speed adjustment and all that stuff. Sources. Next one will be a comfort. Uh, so this would be the climate control and it doesn't have an automatic function. It's just a, let's go ahead and turn it on here. Uh, so let's go to the fan. And then you can see uh, here on the screen what is go, where the air is, the temperature roughly, doesn't give you exact temperature, but it gives you a rough temperature and what the, where the air is blowing, how much the fan is and all that stuff. You can adjust it here. You can even recirculate the air. You can even toggle on the heated steering wheel as well here. All right, um, but the physical buttons here help out a lot, especially if you're wearing gloves or something, you can quickly go here to temperature. Uh, you can do um, all the front rear defrosters, where you want the air to blow, the fan speed, and you can turn the system off, whatever you want there. The next one is the navigation. Uh, so there's the navigation map, and you can do searches here. And there's a full keyboard. Go ahead and close that out. And it's nice and visible. So like you're sitting here driving, uh, you can see it really good. Uh, it's big enough and the clarity is nice enough to where you can see it. Next one is whatever phones you have paired and you have recent calls, contacts, all that stuff, messages can show up here. Then you've got your vehicle uh, information. See right now it's the power flow showing the battery and where the power is coming from which is only the battery and it's going to the climate control. It's not going to the wheels right now. You can schedule when you want to charge it. You can also adjust the charging level. How high you want the amps. So low would be very low like 8 amps. This would be like 16, 24, 32 and this would be like 40 something like that. Char different charging amps levels. Uh, on level two and of course you can on a DC fast charger it'll give you the maximum amount that the you know that the vehicle can give you basically um, so the next one is so you can go into controls this is a quick another way you can get into the surround view camera you can go to the settings here
And then the last last one here is all the apps, all the um, you know different options here. See, how there's media, there's a categorized media, comfort, navigation, and then the phone, vehicle, system, other. So, so kind of categorize them. You can also go to all there. So there's favorites, and then there's all. So you can have favorites. Uh, weather. Let's go to system. Let's go to vehicle. Fun. Now it has Android Auto showing on the screen here, but it does have Apple CarPlay. The only reason why it's not showing it right now is because I have an Android phone paired to the system. So yeah, this is a pretty, fairly intuitive touch screen and you, have, you can pull from the top to get these shortcuts here which you can customize by using that little cog arrow this little cog right here you hit that and you can customize what you want here I use this a lot for the surround cam so there's a physical volume knob that's rubberized there's a mute you can turn the screen off with that button so if you want the screen off you can push that button to turn it off but if you just want to mute, mute the radio it does have this button here and then you can this is actually to turn the screen off but things are still going uh, so this button is to turn the power off like like it's turning off everything but if you want the screen to turn off but it's still playing your music and all that stuff you can have that button and you just tap the screen to turn it back on having a physical volume and tune through the stations is really handy especially when you got gloves on or something like that you can just quickly adjust the volume and then you have the manual controls for the cruise con for the uh, the climate control here so um, you know, basically it just shows the temperature here, where the air is blowing, and then the, the fan speed there. And then down here is a quick access button to lock the vehicle. So that's to lock the vehicle. It has a status light there. Press it again, again to unlock. And it's like a global thing. Like every door will lock and unlock. Uh, this is for the heated steering wheel. It's just on or off. There's no levels. This is the road departure warning uh, button to turn off. So if we press that, Turn off lane sense, press switch again. There we go, lane sense disabled. Uh, so this is the off light. Same thing with the uh, trash control button here. So if you need to spin tires for whatever reason, you can turn this off, default is on. Over here is USB ports and a 12 volt power supply. USB-C, USB-A. So yeah, so everything's within reach here. There's also a rear view mirror, regular rear view mirror. There's a rear view camera. So seeing directly behind the vehicle is, you don't have to have the backup camera because you have the backup, the rear view camera here. Uh, so that's a really nice thing to have because there's no visibility other than the side mirrors without this. Uh, so that's really handy. You can adjust it too. Press this button, uh, then you can adjust the brightness and then you can adjust the tilt up or down so yeah that's a really handy feature up here is interior lights you can have a reading light here here uh, you can also turn on all the interior lights here in the front all off and then have them turn on with the door here in the center position there is two separate buttons one is for emergency services like this would be if you like got an accident or something uh, this one if you need roadside assistance you know like or just explaining how to do something you know so this would be like um assistance with um roadside assistance but also like you, you don't know how to use the system or something you can actually talk to uh ram you know like an operator type thing the visors have i got my i got my business cards up here and uh but the visors are soft vinyl type material and uh so they're easy to clean they extend this way, and they're pretty big, but they don't pull out or move or anything. Uh, there's a little bit of a space there, but they do a pretty decent job, especially here in the front. Basically the same thing on the other side, but, you know, I mean, you can reach over and go like that um, for the passenger, because the passenger sitting in that jump seat not going to be able to reach it, really, with their seatbelt on. So let's say I'm driving, and I have the climate control on, and then I get up. All right, so I get in the back, I get away from the seat here. The climate control momentarily turns off to save on the battery. Now, if you can tell, the fan's not running anymore. All right, so then I come back and finish with my delivery or whatever, sit back down, turns back on. Uh, so it doesn't uh, 
you know, drain your battery if you forget about it or something. Uh, it, it actually turns off based on you not sitting in the seat. Getting in and out of the driver's seat is pretty easy. I mean, you just kind of fall out. <laughs> uh, you have a little step there, and um, I'm kind of doing it slow because I'm holding a camera. But yeah, uh, so very easy to get in and out right into place and start driving the vehicle. So let's go ahead and open the hood. Press that or pull that. And you notice the door covers that up so you don't accidentally pull it. Lifting it up, there's a latch right here, a little bit to the right of center. So right above, like right in here, just push up with your hand. You can see that yellow paddle, that's what you're lifting up. Uh, you can lift the hood, it's not super heavy or anything, but you do have to use a prop to hold it up. Here's the prop here, and it swings up to that orange uh, holder. It's kind of interesting looking under the hood because there's no engine. So there is the, uh, there's the brake master cylinder, brake fluid, coolant, and then we have a separate coolant here. Here is where you put the wind windshield washer fluid. This is probably the main reason why you'd open the hood is right here. Um, everything else is pretty much don't mess with it unless you got a problem. Uh, so you can see in here, uh, there's the orange high voltage lines and coolant lines, uh, that kind of stuff. There is some heat shielding there on the firewall. I think that's just like default for rams. Uh, I guess that could help out a little bit, but it's not a lot of huge amount of heat building up here. It does have the climate control with the condenser coils and stuff like that. And there, since this is not like a highway vehicle, this is like made for zip around town. It doesn't have any active grill shutters or anything like that. Now it has steel wheels with uh, 225, 75 tires. And these are 16 inch steel wheels. And it's a uh, four wheel disc brake system. It works really well as far as stopping. Now it has the uh, leaf springs here in the back. And it has like a, a, a front strut type suspension there on the front. The visibility here in the front is really nice. Directly in front of the vehicle, you have this big windshield, you can see right down to the road. And uh, so yeah, you can see really good. Now there's some visibility issues right in here, as well as this pillar right here gets in the way sometimes of this side mirror. Um, now you, it's simple as just tilting your head forward a little bit so you can see into both mirrors there. But if you're just kind of driving like this, uh, this kind of does get in the way. On the other side, uh, that mirror is completely easy to see, so no problem there. This is really good. So these windows here on this side are, are, are fine. Um, it's just that right here kind of gets in the way a little bit. And also you have this thickness, which is which is kind of added to the actual you know side mirror there that's getting in the way. But once you get used to and accustomed to your your visibility limitations uh, it can be you know adapted you can see how big that that pillar is over there as well so you just have to keep in mind that you do have to look around these pillars and you know keep an eye on your surroundings of course you have in certain scenarios you do have uh, the surround cam right here so you can see it around the vehicle and this is a good it's good to pull this up before you get started like in your parking if you're in a parking spot or something like that and you want to get started just to kind of have a uh, a quick glance around the vehicle, make sure everything's out of the way, make sure you've got your hand truck inside, make sure everything's secure and there's no, nobody immediately around the vehicle, uh, especially children or stuff, children or stuff like that. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll probably mention this about a thousand times. The turning radius is fantastic. So I can literally just whip this thing around um, in a very tight space. It's really amazing. So I can just do a U-turn in just a small area. Uh, most vehicles, like vans and stuff, they don't have this turning radius. It's, it's amazing. And another thing is, when I'm... I've driven delivery trucks for years, and... What's nice about this one is that you don't have the, the, the engine revving up, changing gears, like rev, shift, rev, shift, rev, shift, and you're constantly going through traffic and stuff and you have that noise of the engine revving and then shifting and revving and shifting all day long and, and the engine idling and that, that kind of thing. 
this vehicle, there's no engine idle, there's no raving and shifting, uh, there's no nothing. You just get in the vehicle, drive it, and it's without, without the climate control on, it is very quiet. Uh, there, now, there is some noises that it intentionally makes to alert, you know, pedestrians and stuff when you're going at low speeds or if you're backing up. But uh, other than that, it's really, really quiet as far as the vehicle itself. So just kind of zipping around, it just makes it so much nicer. The acceleration is nice. Of course, you have the, the instant torque. In other words, you have a very responsive drivetrain. You know, uh, people associate the instant torque with like, you know, speed going fast and stuff, but it is fast, pretty fast. But the main thing is that when you hit the accelerator, it goes, you know, there's no like shifting, finding the right gear and then getting the right RPMs on the engine and then going, it's just, it goes, you know, you hit the accelerator, it goes. Uh, so very satisfying driving experience, uh, EVs in general. And this is, you know, one of those type of scenarios. And this is designed for, you know, you drive around town, you drive around a, a city, you're doing local deliveries. You're not doing highway, long highway drives uh, with a range of 160, 170 miles. Uh, it's not really practical. And also the, the, the charging uh, speed, you know, is kind of mediocre on a DC fast charger, uh, especially if you're trying to drive uh, to charge over 80%, it gets very slow. Uh, so it doesn't make any sense to rely on a DC fast charger to, to charge the vehicle all the time. Uh, we'll get into that. We'll get into the actual, you know, charging here shortly. Uh, just wanted to comment and just kind of show you how it drives because it's very easy to drive. It's, it's, very, it's just a pleasure, really. So we can zip right around. And we're on our way to the next del delivery spot. I have the door open, I have this center door open, so a little bit more noise right now than normal. So the visibility, see that, that pillar right there, it has a little bit of a visibility, so you kind of have to lean into it and get uh, a good view here. So you can make sure there's no cars coming. This side is better in that as aspect. And that view right there, all right, looks good. So yeah, zipping around street to street. Uh, I kind of drove around for like an hour, going to different streets, uh, different roads, um, bumpy roads and smooth roads and all that stuff, just to get a feel for it. Cause it has been a while since I've driven a delivery truck. So I wanted to see how this one feels and it's just become more and more pleasurable. The more I drive it, it just feels, I get used to it and it's like, wow, this is really, this is really nice. You don't have to really push the accelerator that much to get going. Uh, you can really push it and um, get going a little bit faster. And every time you slow down and brake, uh, either slow down, coast, or brake, it will uh, turn on the regen braking, will regen some electricity, especially if you're going down a hill. some bumpy bumpy roads back here and we can hear because I have this door open you can hear the back uh, sliding up door rattling and stuff a little bit more but you notice when I come to a complete stop nothing no noise no engine idling nothing like that um, you know it kind of gets old hearing an engine you know running all day long if you're doing deliveries so having that ability to just have silence is nice and also if you're playing the radio or something it, it doesn't the, the engine doesn't interfere with your radio songs or whatever you're listening to
and a street this wide um, well this is a, a cul-de-sac here so let's go ahead and do the turning radius again because it's so satisfying nice just zipping around With a street this wide, I shoot, I could do a U-turn right in the middle of the street right here. Let's go ahead and try that. There's nobody, nobody around. You can just kind of whip it around once again. <laughs> Can't get enough of that. That's nice. Another thing about the uh, this vehicle it has the adaptive cruise control even at low speeds uh, you can set it and if you're cruising through traffic especially you know stop and go traffic that kind of thing really handy uh, it keeps you at a set pace you don't have to constantly change speeds it just kind of keeps you going uh, at a, at a, the, the distance you set between you and the vehicle in front of you and just makes driving through traffic a heck of a lot easier also just maintaining the speed limit you know uh, sometimes if you're on a street it's like speed limits like 25 miles per hour or 35 miles per hour it's easy to forget and go too fast uh, so you can go ahead and just kind of set it and if there's anything in front of you because it has pedestrian detection it has bicycle detection uh, it adds an additional layer of um, safety features so let's go ahead and pull on the scale and see about how much this weighs with me and a little bit of cargo back there i don't have much stuff i have a few packs of water and my camera equipment that kind of thing see what this says here on the scale just get a general idea here i don't know if you can see that it says 78 7820 pounds so yeah that's quite a bit of weight <laughs> um but that's you know that's unloaded there's no there's no stuff. There's no like, you know, cargo. I don't have boxes. I don't have a bunch of stuff. Just a little bit of camera equipment and a few packs of water. I put it back there. And of course me and the vehicle. So this vehicle has a single single rear wheel so it's not like overly wide so going through tight streets like this not really a big deal um, you just kind of gauge your side mirrors there and um, and then you're good Let's go over the railroad tracks. A little bit of noise, but it's the way it is with these type of vehicles. When charging, either between deliveries or at the end of the day, um, very simple. You don't need any like expensive equipment. All you need is a charge cable. Uh, this is the Mopar one, but you don't have to have a real high-end one. Um, you could just plug it in you got a 220 at your shop then you have a, the ability to charge the vehicle you just plug it in it takes about five seconds and you walk away and then when you're ready to drive the vehicle in you just come in unplug it and then you can drive it again so um, the way it works is it shows up here so this is showing two hours and 30 minutes uh, charge time to 100 uh, percent so obviously by morning you'll have a full charge uh, but in the meantime, it's adding miles to the vehicle between deliveries. Uh, and this is a 220. So a 220, uh, I think this is a 32 amp system right here. You can get a little bit faster up to 40 amps or a little bit slower, depending on what you have set in the, in the, uh, the system there. 
uh, it can go a little bit faster. Uh, but the DC fast charger is a different deal. It's not the same thing as this. It will charge a lot faster, up to 80%. But um, this is one of those things that if you use this vehicle, you'll need to plug. You'll need to have a place to plug it in at your shop, or you know where you're storing the vehicle. You have to be able to plug it in. It wouldn't make any sense to to not have that. Uh, it's so easy to have, and literally you never have to go to a DC fast charger. You can just charge it uh, at your business or residence or whatever, and that's it. So you can see the amber clearance lights there at the top, and then it has an LED light. It's a multi reflector. LED light system and there is uh, the daytime running lights around the outside with the amber side marker. Uh, the turn signal just basically takes that daytime running light, turns it amber and flashes it. So nice and visible. Looks really good actually. There's also a turn signal indicator here on the side mirror to amber. You can see it from all sides basically. And here in the back is an amber turn signal indicator. Just a standard bulb, so it kind of flashes on and off. We have standard bulbs here in the taillights. A little bit surprised at that. Um, you think it'd have some LEDs. It does have the, uh, the clearance lights there at the top as well. The driver's door, it doesn't have any kind of like puddle lights or anything like that. Uh, the charge door doesn't have any lights. It just has a little status light, but it doesn't have a light to illuminate the charge port itself. This sliding door, when you open it up, it does have a step light. So it illuminates that step right there. And it's quite bright, actually. And it kind of extends here, so you can step on in. Interior lights are on as well. That tag light kind of illuminates the step. So let's go ahead and lift up the door back here. The interior lights are great, but we also have, let me turn the brightness down on the camera here. We also have these lights here, uh, these little pods. You can see they're right there. There's one on that side, one on this side, and they illuminate the ground, this whole entry area so the steps and everything get illuminated in addition to the really nice uh, lights in here so this whole area right here gets illuminated it's a good 10 feet or so of illumination right behind the vehicle and these lights right here are motion lights so as you walk in the vehicle when the vehicle is closed up if you walk in there they'll turn on but they automatically turn on when you open up uh, the lift gate. So the lighting is really, really good right here. When you're sitting in the vehicle like this, this is what it looks like with the backlit buttons, the screens and all that stuff. And there's the rear view camera, which works really good. You see behind you, even in the darkest light, uh, like it's a dark night and you see the headlights behind you, um, you can see them fine and, and the clarity and everything of the screen is good. There's a little ambient light right here, just like a little moonlight that just kind of illuminates the center area when it's super duper dark. Uh, there's no pocket lights or anything like that. Let me go ahead and turn on the inside lights here. So with the inside lights like that, you can see pretty good. So we can see all in here. You can see where we're stepping. We can find stuff kind of fine stuff in the pockets there uh, does help out a lot you see the these two lights here now you have independent lights so if you just need the one to like read a map or something like that you have this light right here uh, that shines there and then of course there's the other one that shines over there if you just want to say the passenger over there or whatever needs that light uh, you can use that separate lights uh, there's no like mirrors or anything like here in the visors, nothing like that. And you can always, you know, kind of get up, step this way without turning on the interior lights. These are motion lights here. So it's like super bright on the camera. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Uh, so yeah, so these motion lights turn on when you open up this door and you can have full illumination so this this side right here is illuminated 
uh, as I walk down this way, the second one will illuminate. So they're motion directly underneath the lights, and it's like daylight in here now. Can't even tell where it's at. It's dark. So we can access it, everything. We can see everything. Super bright. Uh, excellent lights here in the back. Here's what the surround camera looks like at nighttime. And I'm in a parking lot. There's a little bit of parking lot lights, but you can see pretty good with these with this camera system. It shows you a top-down view, stitches all the views from all the different cameras together, and gives you you can see the lines are straight, so you can see that it, it stitches it together right. And then of course you can see the different views here. That's the back of the vehicle. And then you have different, you can have the front of the vehicle, you can have focus on the back, that kind of stuff. Uh, but as far as nighttime use, it's fine, no problem. Same, with, same thing with this rear view camera here. Uh, it is nice and bright. It's bright enough, anyway. And you can see behind you, and you don't have to deal with people blinding you as far as reflections going into your eye, except for the side mirrors. The turning radius is fantastic. It's amazing how much how tight of a turn you can do with this vehicle. Just generally driving around, zip it around, it's very zippy, it's very easy to maneuver, and you can just kind of, once you get used to it, it's very easy and fun to drive. So here's the light pattern on this wall, and let's go ahead and put the manual lights on here. Okay, so there's low beams, there's high beams. If you put it on automatic, high, uh, automatic headlights, it'll automatically turn on the auto high beams which are working really good so far. Um, kind of surprised. A lot of vehicles have issues. This one works really good. And since this is a multi-reflector LED headlight system, uh, there's a slight, like the, the cutoff is a little bit jagged, uh, but it's, it tends to overlap enough on the road where it's not super patchy or anything like that. So yeah, so far impressed with these headlights, but we're gonna go on a dark road here and take a look at them. If you're just kinda zipping around town, uh, there's more lights. So, you know, but you said it doesn't really matter how well the headlights work as long as other cars can see you and stuff. But it's when you go in those little dark alleys, uh, the dark areas, dark roads is where they need to <laughs> do a good job. So, I don't know if you can tell. You can see there's a little patchiness on the road. As far as just like the aim of the headlights a little bit closer to the vehicle has a dark spot um, but right where you need to see is looking pretty good so as the the how, how these headlights work is that the outer two LED reflectors are your low beams and then when you have the high beam turn on uh, it is the center reflector and so that adds additional light. Uh, so it keeps the outer lights on and then adds that additional light in the center. So it keeps adding light. So the high beams just bring it to a new level as far as uh, you know road visibility. Uh, but even the low beams are really good. Uh, seeing on the sides of the vehicle, uh, the sides here of the road, um, into the trees and the bushes and all that stuff, but watching out for animals. And, uh, and you know, like even, you know, fairly lit areas like this, uh, they're, you know, kind of fill in all the gaps, I guess you can say. And the automatic high beams so far are working great. They, they turn on uh, promptly when they need to, and they turn off immediately when there's a car either coming towards you or in front of you. Okay, so this is a dark road and the trees are off the road a little bit. So there's a, a large shoulder on the side of the road. And uh, so this is where I test the, you know, the high beams and stuff. The low beams are looking good too. And that little patchiness you see, a little dark spot close to the vehicle. To my eyes, it's not really a big deal. The camera's kind of positioned a little bit different than my eyes. Yeah, I can see the trees in the distance. I can see the road all the way down the road there. Um, with the high beams on like this, it is really good visibility. And you have this big windshield too. Uh, so you're able to see close to the vehicle all the way out. 
uh, it just it's really impressive headlights, especially for an electric vehicle where the the LED headlight system is designed to be very, very efficient with electricity uh, to, to avoid draining, you know, excess, excessive draining the battery, you know, and take away from your range. So having really good headlights like this on an EV is, uh, is really good. So yeah, I'm very impressed with these headlights.